Assassin's Creed Odyssey is Ubisoft's latest offering into the pretty sandbox to torturously crowbar some gameplay mechanics into Colosseum. He's sort of become like a patron saint to this particular genre with a load of reliably bankable franchises, in this case Assassin's Creed, but the question is, does Odyssey live up to the Assassin's Creed name? We're close in the name, all told. Assassin's Creed does reliably tempt us with the promise of puncturing jugulars and destabilizing political regions, like a one-man guerrilla warfare declaration. Unfortunately, Ubisoft's gameplay shift in the series has slowly bastardized Assassin's Creed into a starry-eyed historical fanfiction angled into an RPG shell, this time inspired by one guy's purchase of 300 on Blu-ray. For those of you who have played Odyssey's predecessor, Origins, The World of Warcraft, you'll no doubt recognize the leveling and gear system, which is a proverbial ball and chain around the ankle of the game's pacing. Different regions of a map are populated with enemies of a certain level, ensuring a blisteringly beautiful sandbox is always poised to deliver a spotting kick to the testicles if you venture beyond your playpen. The sandbox division does allow Ubisoft to at least more accurately direct the attention of the player around their frankly gargantuan representation of the Greek islands. Those who prefer a more directed experience could just follow their quest markers anyway and never be drawn into the forbidden islands of level 32. However, the essence of Assassin's Creed hasn't always been in freedom, instead it's in the idea that sliding your knife into the neck of some historical schmuck will actually end his life. But this slightly magical desire is once again confounded by the leveling system, level 36 enemies evidently all having sickness like steel tracheas, so even the most determined stabbing couldn't penetrate them. This inevitably means that as the game progresses forward, you can find yourself falling behind in levels and be attempting to brawl your way through the next area with all the combat prowess of a letter opener taped to a rumba. I would often there's a simple fix to this, helping emphasize the value of assassination in Assassin's Creed games. That's simply make assassination attacks a one-hit kill on any person stupid enough not to notice your disco ball armor blooming in the bushes. And if it would truly break Ubisoft's heart to not divide their sandbox by level gating, just have the level indicate how hard your ass would be to mince me if you're spotted and have to engage in proper combat. Speaking of a combat, Origins once again lends its likeness with what's called the Hitbox Combat System, which is Ubisoft's way of conferring that they're incredibly proud of their programmer's capacity to ensure that when a sword hits a man, a sword does indeed hit a man. Gone is the early Assassin's Creed counter-centric combat that simply functioned as a series of pseudo-quick-time events to allow foes to impale themselves on your trusted blade, and instead, it takes a more freeform hack and slash route with active abilities that could be learned through skill trees mandated by the RPG-style mechanics Ubisoft forced into the series. Of course, roleplaying starts off with your initial choice of protagonist at the onset of a game. You can choose to roleplay either a combat-ready mercenary who can instantly master any weapon close to hand, and a destined hero or if it would make Superman avert his gaze and impotency, or the same mercenary with a cock. I suppose gearing with a main quest to be able to be resolved with a bake-off if you try to roleplay a cookery-focused assassin may have been too much to ask. You, that being the optionally genital mercenary for choosing, were born off Sparta and experienced Approximately two flashbacks worth of family affection and care before your father flings you from a cliff because an angry mob told him to. Spartans are renowned for world over in 400 BC for their ability to resist Persian invasions but not peer pressure. And just like that, beautiful Spartan family dynamic was spoiled, there's now also a spoiler warning in effect for the remainder of the video. You wash up on an island and are found by a Greek man who essentially buys your pre an ass into slavery with a hunk of bread. And Emissori functions almost identically to Nico's obese cousin from GTA 4, constantly tangling in get rich quick schemes that invariably lead to you murdering some of the express purpose of untangling them. Speaking of Grand Theft Auto, however, Ubisoft dipped their hand in that particular bucket of brain juice to try and come up with fresh ideas for their sandbox and your outfit wanted system. And instead of cops chasing you since they're busy fighting wars and waiting to be stabbed, you're instead hunted by mercenaries king to yourself. Up to five of the pricks, depending on how many of your fellow Greeks you've disemboweled, and each appears to have their own design, name, and flavor text. Outwardly, the crew of mercenaries in the world looks similar to the Nemesis system from a Middle Earth Shadow of X game, so in reality, the implementation is plaster thin, with no interaction available beyond their potential to hunt you or its assassination targets. Curiously, however, while murder and basic thievery both jack up the bounty like nobody's business, there appears to be no consequence for stealing horses, not even dialogue from the NPC whose ride home is now trailing a dust cloud into the sunset. Either the AI here has the IQ of a lot of bottomized goldfish, or ancient Greece has truly embraced the enlightenment of equine communism. Either way, it's useless since you can summon your own horse at any time with a button press, and in most major areas there's a universal speed limit on horses, consigning them to a just slow enough to be annoying truck that cannot be exceeded. 
funny how a mercenary spills blood with such apathy but maintains a rigid obedience to horse safety protocol. Your stable of animal friends once again features Origins Eagle, this time named Icaros, but unfortunately never has any flammable spectacle attached. This eagle functions as both a mercenary's ID card to those who refer to them as Eagle Bearer and a feathered predator drone in gameplay, scouting out terrain and forts for enemies and at later levels swooping in for a tactical dropping of bird turds. At least I assume they're bird turds for language for game uses is harass, but given the damage done I'd say Icaros is half arsing was at best. Once you've gathered your gang of nature pals to end you in the Great Cross Grease Massacre, you also procure a ship, just as in many other Assassin's Creed games. Though this happens more because the map features many islands, and of course because the mercenary says I need a boat. And the gods of Greece are nothing if not favouritist. One is spawned. It's a lucky coincidence of another bumbling adventure to pull your needy father figure slash slave owner out of trouble. Some shady lad contracts you to sail across the sea and assassinate the wolf of Sparta. Long story short, to make this happen, you destabilize Athenian control in the region, fight on the front lines of a war front to directly claim territory, something assassins are known to be sublime at, and you get an audience alone with them. Turns out, he's your dad. Yeah, the, uh, the one who threw you off a cliff. Small world, huh? Uh, but he's not your actual dad. He's your stepdad, and refused to tell you more because there needs to be some kind of intrigue powering the next few hours of your quest. Presented with a choice, you can either kick your not-so-father off the cliff behind him for some poetic vengeance, or let him slink off to the never to serve as some deus ex machina saviour later. Your odyssey continues with the mercenaries seeking out their mother, along the way discovering a cult of masked men and women looking to control the Greek world and whose party you decide to rain upon like a water balloon filled with bats magma. Not only that, but the cult has your brother or sister, whichever sibling you did not pick at the outset brainwashed as a personal demigod soldier. After identifying and slitting the windpipes of several masked cultists, you eventually find your mother leading an island nation in one of those jobs, where you often find it easy to conceal your identity, explains why she had been missing for so long. Upon confronting her, she still refuses to tell you who your father is, and instead enlists you as her personal hitman slash commander, using your god-given skill set to disembowel half a neighbouring island and launch an invasion. Once you've done your chores, Mother directs you to a mysterious island and gives you an encouraging smack on the bum, saying to locate your father. Credit to Ubisoft, I expected some human embodiment of Zeus or Achilles aging personage to be your father, but actually turns out to be Pythagoras, yeah, the, uh, the triangles guy. Turns out he's guarding Atlantis and you've got to seal velocity away so his power can't be used for some nebulous evil agenda by the cult and others. Of course, there could have been an option to harness for power of Atlantis for good, or to make an assassination mechanic that killed people, but no, the mercenary waters along in lockstep with the plot points, and thus embarks on an Odyssey level fetch quest for four aspects. See, I sank over 50 hours into this game, so obviously there were things I liked about it, or I have in severely impaired decision making. I'll save this for Odyssey, the primary Odyssey of finding and rescuing your family members while resolving conflict for some others is engaging and ultimately very human. Whilst our own character has God-given skill and a destined hero to spiel, the tears shed reuniting with their mother had a weight and resonance that gave a sense of real vulnerability, which had been hidden for so much of their life. Another great example of the humanity of the characters would be the hug your wayward sibling engages in if you manage to unbrainwash them. I slightly miss on their first attempt at the hug a betrayal of how alien the affection is to them, yet at the same time is willed onwards to embrace it. sense of adventure is strong from the outset. Nicknames like Cyclops bandied around on a promise you'll later encounter and dismember them for giving your father figure slash slave owner a hard time. And despite a few truly tedious side quests where you deliver pain and flowers like an Olympian delivery worker that's a good mix of quest objectives in the main arc but extend beyond going to a place and stabbing some lads. 
get to win the Olympics. Get to infiltrate a cult meeting, rig a vote, new even stage of play in which for central actors you stabbing a crime lord. Okay, so there's a lot of stabbing. But an ending scene of a fractured and conflict chicken family half chuckling and half arguing around the dinner table came across as genuinely heartwarming. And like you'd achieved something on a personal level for your mercenary. You'll notice I said an ending scene instead of the ending scene, and this is where the game truly falls flat thanks to its untied shoelaces on the shoes of plus three archery. The family reunion plot carries the game a long way and is aided by the sub-threads of cultist hunting and Atlantis sealing, but it only drags you to level 40 or so before it completes. Many of the cultists you have to kill in order to complete these story threads at level 50, and engaging them in combat before such a level is about as effective as dropping candy on their doorstep every morning and hoping diabetes eventually claims them. And so begins the grind. Ten levels of directionless wandering, relatively inconsequential side quests, and Ubisoft glancing over with a wink as it dangles from micro action store before you, the promise of XP boost to save you a chore of playing its game. Not only that, but once you've sunk hours upon hours into grinding those last few levels, the respective climaxes of the coldest hunt and the ceiling of Atlantis aren't even worthwhile. So ultimately, Assassin's Creed Odyssey's recommendation depends on whether you enjoy RPGs, if you like Skyrim, Dragon Age, or the predecessor Origins. The primary story arc, expansive world, and upgraded combat system will appeal massively to you. If you are looking for a stealthy assassination-focused experience over an ancient history pub car park punch-up, it's far harder to recommend, and it's a problem that Ubisoft will need to inspect for its inevitable next Assassin's Creed game. I know quantifiable elements of RPGs are easier to package into tempting microtransactions, but you can do that while also not slitting the throat of your assassination gameplay. For me though, I like RPGs, MMOs, and I'm not averse to a little bit of grind if it's only so mad that I can get at a game where you can hang from Zeus's mighty stone todger like a brutal murderous sponge drip. I should probably not climb on this. 